in video games. Obsidian Entertainment is releasing a South Park game for all consoles in 2012. It's a sad day for Mega Man fans. Legends 3 has been cancelled. Xbox 360 currently winning the console race as a 3DS skyrockets in sales. The highly anticipated Zelda Skyward Sword has finally been released. That was Today in Video Games. Thanks to our sponsors, ANC Games, located at Sussex and Spadina. Welcome to Versus Mode. Today's topic, retro games. Sean will be debating that retro games are still fun. Carter will be debating that retro games just play on your nostalgia. First topic, gameplay. I'd argue that the gameplay of retro games still holds up, even going back into the 90s and 80s, uh, when compared to modern games. Especially in games that were made from the 80s, when arcades were still strong. Uh, the whole quarter-popping uh, design of a lot of games really promoted this easy to get into but hard to master style of gameplay that we aren't really seeing with a lot of modern AAA titles. A lot of retro games, you play those, you know what you're doing a lot of in the first 10 minutes? You're doing a lot of dying. You know why you're doing a lot of dying? Because the games are designed so that you will die a lot and spend a lot of quarters. <clears throat> that was fine in the arcades when that was the business model, but once you start charging people a flat rate to buy the game and play it on their own home system, that's when it, the gameplay design breaks down and just becomes pointlessly frustrating. You also mentioned uh, easy to get into, hard to master. You mean like Street Fighters is easy to get into? Um, compared to the way it is now, yes, actually. We've come a long way in game design because we've just kept on building upon layers and layers that have been established by previous generations. Even you take something, you know, that's still advertised as being simple and easy to get your mom into, like uh, Mario Galaxy, for instance. Uh, that one's pretty light as far as the controls go. But that's still building on a lot of really technical knowledge that's only come up uh, you know, during the years. Uh, take Doom. You can't even look up or down in Doom. There's not as much of a vertical component to the game. This reduces complexity and makes it easier for new people to get in. I disagree with you there, sir. You hand someone today Doom, you know what they're going to do? They're going to put that shit down. Because you know what? Doom plays like crap because it controls entirely with a keyboard. You know what people play now? Like, as much as Call of Duty might not be that great, lots of people have gotten into that game easily. People who never played games before. That's this generation in a nutshell. That's enough for gameplay. How about remaking old games? There's really nothing wrong with repackaging and reselling a product that you've already got. It's like, as long as you've already still got the rights to it, there's no reason not to keep capitalizing. At those kind of prices, do you? That's just insane. I mean, you have Square Enix right now selling Final Fantasy Tactics from 1997 for like $15 on the iPhone. $15! $15? What's wrong with $15? I know it's 15 times as much as your average iPhone game. They're releasing practically the exact same thing. Now, it's one thing you want to release an older game up, you want to update it. All right, that's cool. Especially if you're going to fix some of the problems that it had in the first place. Like, but you have people like Sony right now, where they remove backwards compatibility from the PS3 so you can't play your old games, and then sell them back to you, minimally improved at a higher resolution, um, and expect you to pay $40 for, for that. That's, that's just ludicrous, especially when you, uh, they didn't even fix half the things. You would see like Shadow of the Colossus, an Ico collection that came out. Shadow of the Colossus is, no, it's abysmal. Sounds like some scrubs are mad at being bad at games. Yeah, if it's being bad at games, then I don't want to have to shirt a giant empty wasteland with slow moving walking and horrible controlling horse controls just trying to find fruit hanging from a tree or lizards that move too fast for me to shoot them. Well then, yeah, I'm bad at games. I don't want to waste my time doing stupid shit like that just so I can go to a boss fight that really isn't even that good because it's ridiculous how to figure out how to even beat half of them in the first place. And even once you know, some of them are like broken to the point where there's this one that can ram you into the wall repeatedly into you die. That's just unfathomable to me how someone can expect someone to pay $40 for that shit. Sonic Generations just came out. Uh, that's one game that I feel clearly plays on people's nostalgia. Or would you say that game is actually fun? 
All right, first off, I need to clarify. Sonic Generations does play a lot uh, off of a lot of nostalgia value. It brings back all of Sonic's friends for you to enjoy. It brings back all of the old stages that you remember from when you were just a you know, five-year-old child playing Sonic two years ago because, well, let's face it, it was always a mascot character. I think Sonic Generations represents Sonic Team getting back into the swing of things, uh, taking the lessons that they forgot from the original games and, you know, going forward with the ideas into the new generation. There's a lot of hype that Sonic Generations is the best Sonic game in years, and I haven't played it yet, so I can't really say, but I have no, I don't really have any doubt that it is. On the other hand, that's not exactly hard given Sonic Team's incredible incompetence as of the last, I don't know, 15 years. But that doesn't, like, just because they've gone back to what worked before, and that's better than what they have now, it doesn't say much, and that doesn't mean it's good, either. I played Sonic games for the first time just a few years ago, and let me tell you, they're bad. They are absolutely abysmal. First of all, the speed mechanic is directly competing against the platforming mechanic, so you can't jump half the time where you want to properly because you don't even know what's coming. I can't count the amount of times that I ran into a spike wall that I didn't even know was there just because I was going too fast. Oh, I feel that we're coming from possibly different places on this. You are right in that it's a little schizophrenic in its design, but it still provides a pretty fast uh, experience compared to other platforms. Faster isn't better. I mean, Mario, Mario is one of the few old school games that actually aged well and still plays well today, and that's because it did what it did, and it was simple at doing it, and it was fun at doing it, and it wasn't ex excruciatingly punishing. It didn't have bad design, and it didn't rely on gimmicks to sell. It was just good. Did I just talk you into admitting that Super Mario Bros. is a game that was made in, what, 1984, 1985, is still a triumph of game design today? It's hardly the only one, but that doesn't mean that I retro think... games, no, you don't win, you do not win, because Mario is the exception to the rule. Other exceptions are Super Metroid and Ocarina of Time on N64. For the most part, everything else at the time was pretty damn bad. And that's why Mario is still the same, more or less the same today. You see Mario Galaxy, Galaxy 2, they're both drawing on the linear design from the original Mario, and, and it still works today because it was still, it's still good. It was good back in the day, and it's good now. Most games have ch made radical changes upon approaching 3D because not only did what they did in 2D not work anymore in 3D, but because those gameplay designs just weren't fun anymore. They were dated, and they were frustrating, and in order to expand and become a better medium, they had to replace those archaic designs with modern ones. That was the debate. Thanks to our sponsors, AMC Games, this was first. The winner of last episode's giveaway is Comment Code. He won Batman Arkham City.